Did you know there's a no-code way to connect sensors like this one to Azure? Well, there is, and the IoT Plugin Prep Bridge will uh, help you doing so. Mahmoud from the team building the IoT Plugin Prep Bridge is here to tell you everything you need to know about it on the IoT Show. Hi everyone, you're watching the Internet Things Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for joining. We have Mahmoud today on the show. How are you, Mahmoud? I'm great. Thank you, Olivier. Thanks Thank for having me. Thanks for joining. So today we're going to talk about IoT plug and play mm -hmm. and a specific uh, feature or actually offer that you guys are working on. And you're going to talk, tell us about your team yeah. and, and that one, which is called the IoT plug and play bridge. First, before jumping into that, can you share with our audience who you are, what you do at Microsoft? Yeah, certainly. Hey, folks. My name is Mahmoud Hussain. I am a uh, product manager for the IoT Plug and Play Bridge uh, that uh, Olivia mentioned. And uh, I've been working on this for a while with our devs. And I'm really super excited to bring this uh, to the show. Awesome. So you uh, are talking about the bridge. Uh, you will be talking about the bridge. Before jumping into that, you guys need to know that we recently announced IoT Plug and Play, mm -hmm. which is a great feature that will allow device manufacturers to basically have their devices declare the capabilities yeah. to a cloud application. Uh, so like think USB plug and play for yeah. IoT, right, mm -hmm. basically? Yeah. Uh, and so that feature arrives real soon. People will be able to play with it real soon. Sometimes it's not enough. And we'll talk about a specific scenario mm -hmm. here where you have different actors, some building actual sensors that don't connect to the internet, some building these hubs or gateways mm -hmm. that will be able actually to connect to the internet on one side and connect to these sensors on the other one, and will be actually used as a bridge to mm -hmm. uh, have these sensor data going up to an IoT application. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that. So what is that IoT pl plug and play bridge that you guys are building, and why are you building that? Yeah, no, I think you said it really well. All right, think of it as a bridge, right? Um, and uh, previously, you must have heard of the IoT plug and play uh, uh, itself. And this bridge takes that one step further. So we're actually building on top of it. So our promise for the plug and play bridge is for device builders, you know, folks who are building devices like this, uh, that if there is a sensor, that is connected to a Windows or a Linux box. Then we take that sensor and we bridge it over to Azure. And there is no code needed. With a little bit of an asterisk, anytime we say you know, blanket statements like that, there's always a little <laughs> asterisk, right? <laughs> you know, there's, um, there's a little bit of code that you may need to write if you're doing something proprietary. So we provide that uh, as, an, uh, as an option as well. Uh, so really, any sensor that is plug and play compatible with Windows or Linux, bridge that over to Azure without having to write any code for well-supported sensors. Um, and you don't have to recertify your device, your gateway device in this example, mm -hmm. uh, if you're adding new sensors. And that's a huge benefit uh, to our device builder community. Maybe we can actually go into a little bit of details here. So when you're a device manufacturer, one of the big interests of having it IoT plug and play certified, mm -hmm. which is a, a process where you actually say, my device will actually support IoT plug and play, and yeah. here is the model that actually I'm publishing mm -hmm. so that my customers can go and download that model and mm -hmm. reuse it, or for my device to auto-declare itself. And there's a warranty for the final integrator or customer that this device will integrate into IoT sol solution seamlessly thanks to IoT yeah. plug and play interfaces. So the device manufacturer himself is actually eager to have his devices certified. Mm -hmm. And the certification actually indicates that th there's a specific device model that goes with right. that certification for that device, right? E exactly, right? And if you take this example over here, um, you know, what we're showing over here is a Modbus sensor. Um, mm -hmm. And this is an environmental sensor that does carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, humidity, temperature, lots of other things. And this is something we just purchased off the shelf, right? We've connected it to this gateway device via this uh, RG45 cable. Mm -hmm. Pretty standard for the way a lot of Modbus sensors are connected. This breaker board right now has one connection, but you can imagine about 240 odd sensors connected on a single device. Mm -hmm. uh, here it's a serial uh, a breakout that's coming and terminating on RS-232, and that's an adapter for Modbus to 232. What we have running on this right now is the, uh, the bridge application. So it's taking care of all that complexity that, Olivier, you talked mm -hmm. about, right? Uh, the device builder has to actually comprehend what the device capabilities are. It has to comprehend what the uh, device capability model for Azure is. Mm -hmm. And so the bridge is taking care of all of that and is abstracting that away so that the only two things that you need to do is to let the bridge know what interfaces you're creating towards Azure. Mm -hmm. 
And if you've done Azure uh, programming before, this is really straightforward because this is a pretty standard and, uh, uh, and you know, uh, standard way of connecting to Azure. And the second thing that you need to do is provide a configuration for how the bridge should talk to this sensor. In this case, this is a Modbus sensor. It came with the user manual that the manufacturer provided, and it said that read address X in order to get the carbon dioxide temperature, mm -hmm. or the temperature, and read address Y for this. And so that's all that yeah. we did, right? In a config, we just exposed that, mm -hmm. and we let, let the bridge run, and this is now connected to IoT Central. So the bridge, like, literally comes at that level, right? You have, uh, yeah. actually, you have IoT yet running on that gateway here, right? We will. We are not we yet. Yeah, we are waiting okay. for customer input, and that's one of the things we'd love to hear from our customers. If there is an application that you want to run as mm -hmm. an IoT Edge module, please let us know. We want to put the dev engineering resources in the right place. Yeah. And so on that gateway, so IoT Edge or not, basically the IoT bridge, IoT plug and play bridge, is yeah. sitting there to give a common interface for the cloud to the sensors that are behind, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And you know, this, the, uh, this uh, slide just kind of illustrates that a little bit better. Okay. Um, so if you, if you look at the, uh, starting from the sensors mm -hmm. on the far uh, left hand side, yeah. right? These are various kind of sensors that may be connected to a Windows device or a Linux device. This mm -hmm. is pretty standard for what you would see in an industrial deployment. Mm -hmm. There are a huge variety of sensors that are connected to these kind of devices. And we, and you know, for the most part, they love to develop on a high-level OS like Windows mm -hmm. or Linux because their drivers are already available for them, mm -hmm. right? And that's where they do most of the development. And so what we do is we use those, utilize those standard stacks and provide the bridge on top. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, the topmost layer is the IoT plug and play SDK. Yep. Right? So we comprehend the IoT plug and play SDK and we use those APIs to talk to Azure and to IoT Central. Um, and in terms of, uh, let's say you have your own special piece of hardware, we allow you to write your own special piece of code as well mm -hmm. and integrate that with the bridge. And we provide sample code for a serial PNP, which is an open protocol. It's all available on yep. GitHub and we'll give you the links later. Um, and what I was referring to was we are under development for the IoT Edge runtime, and this yep. is coming soon. This is awesome because actually what you're doing, you're adding a level of abstraction to make developer's life even simpler, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. that glue in between the hardware and the drivers and the services running in the OS and the plug and play layers in the SDK, they would have to develop that today, right? right. Which is our promise of no code yeah. way of connecting yeah. sensors to the cloud actually yeah. is getting yeah. You know, closer and closer, closer to reality. And closer, yeah. And let's see how we can actually do that right now, yep. right? Um, over here, I have this set up in our Taiwan offices. This is the Cathay Landmark. And you can see that we're using the device provisioning service. And it's showing up uh, in the Microsoft offices in Taipei. And the sensor is already uh, sending out the data to the IoT Central. And you can see all of the carbon dioxide and other key data performance over there. Uh, and this is a great dashboard for someone who is on IoT Central. Uh, and you can see on the menu up there, I can use the IoT Central to uh, set commands and properties. So I can use the, uh, the IoT Central to set commands. Uh, I can clear the carbon dioxide alarm, for example, or reset certain alarms. Um, and at the same time, I can also see certain properties uh, of, uh, of the uh, sensor as well. And all of this uh, is without having to write any code. So let's have a look really quick uh, at what I had to do in order to uh, get this yep. done. So this is a configuration file, and over here I'm saying that, hey, I'm connecting over DPS, uh, Device Provisioning Service, and these uh, are the URIs, and for someone who's done, done Azure before, this is very familiar. Uh, and for the sensor specifically, I'm saying that this is connected over a serial port COM1 in this case, and this is how it's connecting. Um, and then from the manual uh, that came with the sensor, I figured out that just by reading the manual, that, that at this address, 40001, mm -hmm. is where I read uh, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide at 4002, um, and so on. So it's as, as simple as that, right? All I had to do was just plug in these values, and, and that's it. It's as simple yep. as that. Yep. So that's great moment. So actually, just like JSON file editing, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the cloud can understand these sensors' information through that gateway or hub, right. uh, whatever it's called, right? Yeah. Uh, so th that's like pretty straightforward. Having that layers of traction, making developers' life even easier, so IoT plug and play breach on top of IoT plug and play, mm -hmm. um, definitely something we recommend to use. Yeah. Today supporting Linux, Windows, both. Yeah. So right now we've obviously got great support for Windows and Linux as well. Uh, there's a slight difference in the feature set between Windows and Linux, uh, but you know we are always looking for feedback from our customers. 
And so we'd love to hear from you on what you would like to see as a feature, uh, whether it's Windows or Linux. Um, awesome. So we're going to add the links in the description of this video yep. for you to know where to go to learn more and to provide the feedback as well. Yep. Thanks for coming on the IT Show. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thanks for uh, watching. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>